Jamie Manasha. Sheffield United have had one of the worst seasons in Premier League history, scoring only 16 points and conceding 104 goals, the most that has been ever conceded in Premier League history. It is a massive task to rebuild Sheffield United, but that's what Rebuild Sombrero and his men are going to do today. We have set the blades into the championship where they are of course in real life in a 24-25 season alongside the other relegated sides in Burnley and Luton Town. On the other hand of course we have therefore set Ipswich, Leicester City and Southampton into the Premier League. I'm really glad that we start in the championship because this side isn't filling me with confidence at all. We have a three at the back that I don't like trusty Ahmed Ozic and Holgate as center backs. We have a couple of higher rated players like West Fodringham who is 32 though already. Vinicius Souza, a 24 year old 75 rated CDM. Hamer, a 26 year old 75 rated CM. Archer being 21, a talented man for the future of course. In the first seasons we are going to use the Youth Academy and that's why Liam James, a 2 star 4 star scout, gets set to England for I believe nine months to start off here searching for a whole heap of youth academy players. A new era starts at Sheffield United and it all starts with the Gagan pressing tactical vision. I don't want to sit on the back foot, I want to attack the championship. We have also filled up the coaching staff with two coaches in each department just to let the players grow that little bit faster. Buying those coaches has dipped our budget down to 15 million for the first season. Just to keep it a little bit more realistic, I'm going to terminate all the loans here. We have done a massive, massive club clear out and look at the positions now on the bench. We have McBurney still, but all the others, except for maybe Davies, are not of any use here. We don't have a goalkeeper even at the club anymore. Just to give you a little idea of what we have done, it is Gribic going to Torino for 9.2 million, Norrington Davies to Basakshire, Jebison to Wolfsburg, Robinson to Houston Dynamo, Osborne to Club Bruges, Koulibaly to Rio Ave, and then Baldock to Burnley, Basham, one of our starters, he's 35, he goes to Club Inter Miami, and then goalkeeper, the third string, Adam Davies, 31-69, he goes to Cremonese, we have a massive budget of 36 million in our bank after this perfect clear out. We make a first transfer of this rebuild with Sheffield United by going in for a young centre back from Portugal. A man for the future but also already for the present as he's one of our highest rated centre backs. The Sporting Lisbon centre back Eduardo Quaresma joining us for 7 million on the dot. The second guy we sign is a crucial player. A former wonder kid on FIFA, but I don't know what happened to his career. But oh well, I'm here to revive it. Rebuild Sombrero strikes a deal. The new goalkeeper in the squad here. A Frenchman, 24 years of age, still a lot of room to grow. Alban Lafond, our second signing for 13 million. Quaresma replaces Trusty at the center back spot. Trusty gives us some backup now on the bench alongside Egan. And Lafond replaces Fodderingham in goal. Now we finally have two goalkeepers again and one very good one, 24-77. Last but not least, we go in for yet another crucial player. 18 years of age, the youngest player we've signed so far. A left midfielder slash left winger. An Englishman, of course, for Sheffield United. It is Jamie Bino Gittens joining us for 9.6 million from Borussia Dortmund. So this is our team for the first season here with Sheffield United. Brewster is converting to a right wing. Binoe Gittens to a left wing. Maybe set them in the right positions here. Quaresma and Ahmed Zodzic now. Quaresma in there, 21-73. They will hold down the fort. Bogle is a man that is really interesting. Converting to a right back from a right wing back. Love does the same from a left wing back to a left back. We change Binoe Gittens position from a left midfielder to a left winger. And he goes up by 2 actually to a 76. We've even sold our big CDM Oliver Norwood to Burnley, our competitors. But he's 32, 73. As I'm going to give a shot to Arblaster, 1966. He was the, the default captain. I didn't understand that. But he's actually 
got some potential and Heima is converting to a CDM so he will take that spot. And we can already change Gustavo Hamas position to a CDM and he goes even up by one. I have just had a massive shock because Jaden Bogle, our right back, has been sold to Porto. As he had some kind of a release clause, I didn't even notice that. And now we are in a big, big mess because Seriki is our backup right back. He's only 60 overall. We've completed our three transfers. The transfer window is done and dusted, but we don't have a real right back here. In the meantime though, trying to get over that shock of Bogle leaving us, it is Tom Davies converting to a CDM from a CM and he stays at a 72. While Max Love is also converting to a left back and he stays at a 72. And Sam Curtis, I didn't even notice, I loaned him out as well, he comes back even on a plus one here and he will probably become our starting right back. And I mean, this is how we are looking like, Sam Curtis only 17, he gets his chance. Seriki now on the reserves, 2160. I am right now doing something a little bit crazy, as I recall Liam James. The thing is, with 14 million we can hire a much better scout than of course uh, Liam James. And we can go in for a 5 star, 5 star scout, Viti Rezen and a Finnish scout. That's what I love to see. I'm gonna send him to England of course, for another 9 months. We are also changing a couple more positions. Ryan One from a striker to a right winger stays at a 57. And then probably the biggest positional change is Ryan Brewster from a striker to a left winger. I expect something, but he actually stays. No, that's bad. Benny Traore, uh, you just missed that, but he goes up from a 68 to a 71. That's the biggest and the halfway point of the championship season, the first one. After 25 games, we are in fifth spot. So in a playoff promotion spot, Nine points behind Watford, that is a bit of a shock, I'm not gonna lie. Seven points behind Leeds and six even behind Norwich. And only the two first, of course, get automatically promoted. I mean, those stats underlie why we aren't doing that well. It's not been the greatest of seasons. Eight goals for Archer is the best of feelings. Binoy Gittens, though, with six goals for assists, not bad. McBurney with 6 goals, the backup striker, Heima with 5 goals. I mean, at least the growth on the players is very good. Quaresma up to a 75, Ahmet Otsic 77, Heima 77, Souza 78. Even Kurt is up to a 65, the right back. Pino Egitens at a 79, this is a crazy player. And even Lafont up to a 79. We need to do better in the second part of the season and therefore we get help from the Youth Academy. All those four players get promoted. As soon as we got a better scout, we get better players. That's just how it works here. Right at the end of the winter transfer window, we had to sell Oli McBurney because he wanted to leave the club. And that's why we have gotten 7 million out of him. A big deal actually for 4.6 million valued player. Ahead of next season already, it is John Agan going away from the club to the Saudi Pro League, to Al Hilal. I have found more gems here, one goalkeeper, a right back and certainly a left wing in Jake Higgins, 16, 64, 86 to 94 potential. For next season already we sell Anis Sliman to Burnley for 3.75 million, as well as Tom Davies for 6 million to Galatasaray. He wanted to and at the end of the first season with Sheffield United we make it as the champions of the championship. But just look at that race, incredible, one point ahead of West Brom. Two ahead of Leeds United and three ahead of Norwich City. 11 draws, 10 losses, 25 wins. And that is good enough to make 86 points, get promoted as the champions. We'll of course go up alongside West Bromwich Albion and Middlesbrough actually. Who make it out as the third team out of the championship. Defeating Watford in the championship playoff final. In the FA Cup it is a surprise winner in West Ham defeating Spurs. While we actually made it into round 5, which is the round of 16, and got just about defeated by Manchester City. The Carabao Cup goes to Aston Villa, again a surprise win over Manchester United. We actually made it to the quarterfinals, even one better than in the FA Cup. Against Liverpool, we only lost on penalties 3-0. I wouldn't have expected that, uh, of course, we get promoted at the halfway point of the season, when we were about 5th. But Cameron Archer is the man of the season. 17 goals, 5 assists. 10 goals for Benye Traore up to a 74. Good decision to convert him into a left winger. Heima with 8 goals, 4 assists. 
Bino Eki 10 7 goes 8 assists, up to an 81 by 7. I've never seen such growth. And not a bad uh, season by any stretch. Even Curtis up to a 67, up by 4 or 5. Great season. Ahmed Odzic 78. Quaresma 77. Lafond up to an 80. Bino Eki up to an 81. Archer 77. Traore 74. I mean, next season maybe a better center midfielder. A better right back. But then we are good to go. In our very first season with Sheffield United, we've given a very good account of ourselves. Round 5 in the FA Cup, quarterfinals in the Carabao Cup, and certainly, most of all, champions of the championship. Let's get into the promised land. We start off our first Premier League season with a big budget of 76 million at the beginning. We've already spent some of it on this player that I'm negotiating with right now. And that's where we sign a new right winger. 20 years of age only, a Ghanaian. And now he comes to the Blades, to Sheffield United from Sporting. It is Abdul Fatawu. We needed a better right back, and who better to bring in than a player who has got experience in the Premier League. Still very, very young, 21 years of age. It is Conor Bradley joining us from Arsenal of all teams for 22.7 million. And last but not least, we go in for a new Cam. CM slash Cam, actually. A Swiss international who teared it up in the Euros, it is Fabian Rida joining us from Stadren for 12.5 million. We also cleared house here by selling West Fotheringham to Stad Brestwa for 2.4 million. Turner to Pendix for he lost his potential tag for 1.6. Another player to Pendix for in Femi Seriki, 960k. With the team looking like this, I am much more confident. Rida in that camp for 2276, the Swiss international. Bradley 2176 as well. On the right back spot. And the big man Fatavu 2077. Three big improvements in the squad. On weak spots in our team. In our first 11. Lobby still. Okay boys. Looking at the stats at the halfway point of the season. Doesn't really fill me with confidence. Seven goals is the best of the best. With Fatavu and Archer achieving that. On the other hand though. The team grew relatively well. I mean... We have Ahmed Odzic up to an 80, Quaresma at a 79, Bradley at a 78, Archer 79, we have Fatabu 80 and Binoe Gittens 83. I don't think that this team is in a relegation battle, also looking at, of course, their morale. Let's see, we are in ninth place, wow! Absolutely, we are not in a relegation battle, absolutely not, I mean... We are actually only 8 points above Wolves in the relegation, first relegation spot. Middlesbrough and Forest are even below them. But yeah, West Brom are second season. We have fallen off a little bit into 12 spots. Spurs of all teams beating Man United to the title. That is a very unrealistic Premier League table here, but oh well. And Spurs even win the FA Cup against Cardiff of all teams. What an unrealistic FA Cup final as well. We have been beaten by Crystal Palace in a round 3 replay in the FA Cup. Oh my god, what are Spurs cooking there? I mean, they have even won the Carabao Cup, a domestic treble for Spurs. We have been beaten in the second round of the Carabao Cup by Southampton. Abysmal performance there. 17 goals for Fatavu, 11 for Archer, 9 goals, 15 assists for Binoe Gittens. The stats aren't looking that bad. I mean, we'll have to be ruthless from now on. Love didn't really grow that much, he's 28-74, even Heymar 27-78, both of those probably need replacing, otherwise this team is looking fine though, Lafond 81, Ahmed Odzic even up to an 80, he's a OG Sheffield player. From next season onwards though, we will be without Austin Trusty, the American, joining Brighton. 12th place in the Premier League, not a bad first season in there. Actually, especially the first half of the season, above my expectations. Round 3 in the FA Cup, round 2 in the Carabao Cup, not great, but overall still a good season. Let's jump into season number 3. For season number 3, we have 66 million in our budget. But for our first signing, we don't even need that much money. Because actually, we can go in for a free agent. I did not believe my eyes when I saw him. On that free agency list. A position we don't necessarily need it upgrades in. But still one of our weakest links. Denzel Dumfries walks in on a free. I mean Denzel Dumfries 81 overall. 29 years of age. 
And as I told you guys, we needed an upgrade as well in the CDM spot. We had to chuck Gustavo Hama into the deal to get a man who was playing in Saudi Arabia. It's Frank Yannick Cassier joining us from Al Ali, 15 million plus Gustavo Hama. And last but not least, our probably weakest spot in the team is the left back spot. That's why we've gone in for a man that really impressed me during the Euros. A Turkish man on the left back spot. Ferdi Kadioglu joining us from Fenerbahce, 27.5 million plus Harry Boys. At the end of the day, we have massively thinned out the squad and no reserves left at the club. I don't know if that's a good idea. Only one centre back and no CDMs. But oh well, very very low squad numbers, but still a very good start 11. We added players like Cassier, 28-84, Kadioglu still only 25-82, and then a big one in Denzel Dumfries, 29-82, I've converted him to a right back, he's gone up by one. Just to complete the transfer window, I'm gonna show you all the business I've done. It is Benny Traore, who's gone to Feyenoord for 8 million. Oliver Ablasta, the default captain. I just couldn't need him anymore. He's gone to Alali for 5.1. Harrison Glover, a youth academy goalkeeper, has gone to Hanover. Another youth academy player in Roy Benokli has gone to Coventry for 3.4. And then Sam Curtis, he's done a good job last season, the Irishman. But his growth was at the maximum already, so we've sold him to Eidenheim. It's a hard grind here with Sheffield United, but at the halfway point of the third season, some progress is to be seen. As we are in 7th spot on 30 points after 20 games. We are only 4 points though behind Fulham in 4th place, the last Champions League spot. How we are in 7th place I don't know, because Archer with 5 goals and Binoy with 5 goals are the best scorers of this team. Granted Archer up to an 82, Binoy up to an 87. But I don't know how we've done so well. Kessier with four goals, not bad. And then comes Ahmed Odzic already. The growth though on those players is absolutely brilliant. I mean, Reader up to an 82. We have Kessier even up to an 85. Souza 84. Quaresma 82. Ahmed Odzic is a bit stuck here in terms of growth. Ahead of the end of the winter transfer window, we have sold Andre Brooks to Cardiff City for 2.2 million. He just wasn't It's the end of the third season and our manager rating is in the red and i don't know why let's find out well actually i don't know because we finish in seventh place how is that a bad finish seventh place gives you a red manager rating i don't understand this game spurs win the premier league again very unrealistic while west brom wolves and ipswich all go down man city win the fa cup over arsenal while once again we go out early doors in round 3 against Liverpool. Man City also win the Carabao Cup. And even here we go out in round 2 we embarrass ourselves against QPR of all teams. Let's have a first look at the Champions League here as Dortmund defeat PSG. They tanked them in the final. The other European competitions, a all Italian final that goes to a uh, surprising Bologna over Napoli. And Athletic Bilbao defeat Braga in the Europa Conference League. Well, Jamie Beno Gittens has been the best player by a mile. 11 goals, 5 assists, up to an 88. 7 goals, even 4. CDM Cassier. The team is great. Archer has even been called up to the English national team, which shows that we do something right here. Some positions, especially in the striking force, the Archer, who has grown well, but I'm just not sure. He scored about 7 goals, that is just not enough. Again, I can't understand how we are in the red manager rating. Seventh place in the Premier League is a great achievement. But oh well, only EA will know. To start off season number four, we make a big, big player sale. A, a man we just bought last season. But actually, I thought it wasn't a good idea to have two great right backs in the same spot. And that's why we sold Denzel Dumfries. We brought him on a free... And he goes off to Roma for 40 million. Only profit for us. Great deal. That sale alone brings us up to 117 million. An incredible crazy amount of budget. And as we can see here in the objectives, we will play the Europa Conference League this season. And the objective is to win the cup. I mean, this board is really hard to please. First off, we go in for a new goalkeeper. 
a man who I think already played for Sheffield United. It is Aaron Ramsdale joining Sheffield United for 37 million from Arsenal. I don't want to outright replace Ahmed Todzic, so I go in for a player who is very, very exciting. He's already been linked to Real Madrid in real life, and here we sign him. It's a Frenchman only 20 years of age, an exciting prospect. It is Leni Euro joining us from City for 30 million. 42 million are still in our bank to go in for one final player and I think it should be a striker. And that's when I came to the brilliant idea to sign a world-class striker. A man who is 32 years of age, 89 overall. And I can tell you that we had to stretch every single penny in our budget to go in for that player. Of course, I'm talking about Harry Kane who joins us for 38 million plus Cameron Archer. We literally have two euros left in our budget. Well done, brilliant work. We've of course Kane in this striking spot. That's what you like to see. Our front three is world class now. The back line is strong as well. Midfield is good. Ramsdale now the starting goalkeeper. Of course a plus two on La Font. Ahmed Ozic for now has the starting centre back spot. But Yoro is just about there. He's two behind him in overall terms. Just to round off the transfer activities of the window, we have sold Brewster to Benfica for 5.4 and Baldwin to Copenhagen for 4.4. So lads, at the halfway point of the fourth season, we are only in eighth spot and I'm a bit disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. With this team we have built, with Harry Kane up top, we are only in eighth place. On the brighter side of things though, we are only 3 points of 3rd placed West Ham, so there is a lot of hope still. In the Europa Conference League, we only finished in 2nd, 10 points, 4 points behind Zagreb. We will make it to the preliminary round, where we will face Westerlo. And I mean, Binoe Gittens is still the man. 12 goals, 7 assists, up to a 90 overall. Fatabu up to an 88, 8 goals, 4 assists for him. Harry Kane comes in with 7 goals, he's gone down by 1, but oh well. Growth wise, we are looking fine, especially the front 3 is great. Midfield is good, Kessier up to an 87, we have Souza at an 85, Reader at an 85, Ahmed Hodzic at an 85. Lads, we have been so close to winning the Premier League in that second part of the season, it's actually unbelievable. 73 points, 1 point behind Manchester United. Same points than Liverpool. I mean, how, how close are those five top teams together? Three points between Man United in first and Spurs in fifth. On the other hand of the table, it is Everton, Fulham and Brentford going down. But I am gobsmacked that we actually qualify for the Champions League and such a low points total to become champions as well. Well, Man City, they didn't win the league, but they win the FA Cup over Liverpool. While we have been knocked out by Arsenal in round four. Spurs have won so many trophies in this rebuild, it's actually not beautiful. It's 1-0 against United in the Carabao Cup, where we have been defeated by Crystal Palace in round 3. We haven't done well in any cup competition so far. The Champions League goes to Juventus over Borussia Dortmund. Frankfurt win the Europa League over the kings of this competition, actually, Sevilla. And in the Conference League, we started off in the preliminary round, just scraping through Westerlo 3-2. Round of 16, we defeated Boavista to make it to the quarters, where we destroyed Villarreal. And in the semis, we were then coming up short against AZ Alkmaar from the Netherlands. And it is Olympic Marseille defeating AZ in the final day. I'm delighted to have bought Harry Kane. He scored us two, 23 goals. 4 assists, 20 goals as well for Binoe Gittens, he's a superstar, 91 rated, 14 assists as well. I'm just showing you this team, you know it already, inside out. But I like this team and I love the fact that we will actually play in the Champions League next season with this squad. A very good season all around, third in the Premier League, semi-finalist in the Conference League. The National Cups, the Domestic Cups are still a bit iffy, but otherwise, I am ready for the fifth season with Sheffield United. Our first signing to play in the Champions League to strengthen that midfield, we didn't have any backups there. And that's why we have swooped in for an Italian. As we have just signed a new star player in midfield, in Davide Fratesi, for 66 million from Atletico Madrid. Good deal, I would say. 
And after the Fratesi deal, we still have a staggering 92 million in our budget to go in for two more players. A new man for the right back spot has been signed here. An Englishman returning to the Premier League. Tino Livramento joining us from Lazio. For Connor Bradley in a swap deal, plus 33 million. He's 25, 84 overall. I mean, our squad is looking good. But actually, I don't know if it's really worth it to keep Bulafond at the club. He's 82 overall, 28. Maybe we can cash in and get some big money to bring in another class player. I don't really know yet, but yeah, I'm contemplating about that. Here it is then. We have sold both Max Love for 7.8 million to Wolves, as well as Alban Lafont for 38 million to Lens. We don't have any squad depth left here. That's the only thing I can tell. Not a striker on the bench. Not even a fullback, and we have only one, one transfer left. But we have about 100 million for that final transfer, so good money. I've actually decided to recall Arta Elliott from his loan spell, and he's gone up by 4 overall, so he can be the backup to Kane. At least one position sorted. As our final signing of season number 5, we go in for a new left back, signing Destiny Udogi. We are now a Champions League club. We can afford that. 92 million from Juventus. We have now a high-profile left back, 24-86 rated Udogi, and a very good left back on the bench as well. Only one point below. He can also play on the right as he's right-footed even. Euro could overtake uh, Ahmed Odzic this season. In our first ever visit to the Champions League, we'll be in a tough group, I'd say, with Barcelona firing off from the Netherlands and Panathinaikos from Greece. So I'd be really happy. At the halfway point of the season, we are in third place. Excellent work, lads. Sheffield United in third place in a title race. Only four points of Manchester City. And in the Champions League, we topped our group. That's what I love to see. I didn't expect that. 13 points, one ahead of Barcelona, six ahead of Feyenoord. And in the round of 16, we will face Real Sociedad. For once, we don't get screwed in the round of 16. Usually, even if we finish top, we get someone like Real Madrid or Barcelona. But this time, it's Real Sociedad. Binoe Gittens is just a cheat code. 16 goals, 10 assists, 26 contributions in 28 appearances. 9 for Kane in 22. 8 and 3 for Fatavu. 6 goals even for Cassie. He's up to an 88. I it is the first leg at the Estadio de Anueta. Away in Spain, Real Sociedad against Sheffield United. Can the Blades create an upset here in the first leg? With a full strength first 11. No, it's actually a defeat. 2-1, even though we were 1-0 up to Kane. We have to work on a redemption arc here. At home, Bremer Lane, second leg. 2-1 behind from the first leg against Real Sociedad. It's a massive, massive moment. Can we get our win here? Quick simming against... Real Sociedad, we do it! 3-2 on aggregate, 2-0 on the night. Udogi and Kane with the gold. Thankfully, we got through. Harry Kane pulls us through. And now in the quarterfinals, we face Milan. Once again, away from home first. The question is, can we get a better result this time? At San Siro, then the first leg in the round of 16. Yes, 1-0 win, Harry Kane. That's how you do it. Okay, boys, let's just finish the job here, please. At home, against AC Milan, against the Italian Giants, we win again, 2-1. Harry Kane, once again, scoring the winner. Cassier gave us an early lead, Gabri Vega equalized. But we win 3-1 on aggregate and are off to the semi-finals. I love that. Now in the semis, we could face either Bayern Munich, LOSC Lille or Borussia Dortmund. That is a chance, actually. Apart from Bayern, the, the other two are really affordable for us. They are beatable. Okay, if you enjoyed the video, then please the consider subscribing out. to the channel and putting a like on the video. And it will effectively be a matchup with Borussia Dortmund in the semi-finals. Once again, for the third time running... Away from home first, I don't care, I just want to get a good result here at the BVB Stadium, and we do that, 2-1 win away from home. We win away to Borussia Dortmund, Pino Egitens and Fratesi, score our goals, Boniface gave them the lead, but I love that, I actually didn't expect that either. For the second leg, Quaresma has a knock, so Euro plays in his place, hopefully that will not in any way, shape or form weaken us. Let's quick sim the game. Can we reach the final? No! Oh my god! Oh no! Merino with a hat-trick! Rashford with a goal! Kane and Cassie score for us, but that is not enough. We get tanked at home. 
Well, at the end of the Premier League season, at least we go in second place, but 13 points behind Manchester City in first. Very, very far away still from the Premier League title. At least we could, though, cement our legacy in the top four. On the other hand of the table, it is Wolves, West Brom and Hull City all going down to the championship. The FA Cup goes to Liverpool over Arsenal in the final, and we have been knocked out by the same Arsenal in round four. However, a whole different story in the Carabao Cup, where we win the final against Manchester City of all teams on penalties. Champions League in an all-German final, it is Borussia Dortmund over Bayern, we could have been that, but of course we'd had been knocked out in the semi-finals against Dortmund. The Europa League goes to Inter over PSV 3-0 and rounding off the European competitions by Chelsea winning the Conference League over Anderlecht from Belgium. Jamie Bino Gittens has just been immense from left wing 27 goals, 14 assists, 24 for Kane is great as well. 87 overall, 34 years of age, an absolute machine. 10 goals even for Cassie, 7 assists, he's a midfield maestro. A fantastic team all around, the most of the players are really unhappy, I don't know why, we've had fantastic achievements this season. Great season, even though the board di don't agree, we are nearly in the red again, but winner of the Carabao, round 4 in the FA Cup was a bit of an L. Semi-finals in the Champions League, we could have won that tournament this season, but oh well. We'll have to wait one more year, maybe then we can also win the Premier League in season number 6. To start off the 6th season, I am showing you 3 players that are going to get promoted to the senior team. Reeve, Colds and Watts, all of them promoted. We have sold both Finley Draper to Leicester City where he was loaned out to. He's still showing great potential but we have better goalkeepers all around. And then Roy ben Terry, he had reached his ceiling already. So our backup goalkeeper from last season goes to Bergamo Calcio for 16.8 million. We will have by a mile our biggest budget yet, 217 million, no excuses this season, not to win everything there is to win. And certainly Harry Kane is going down in overall, 35-86, so we need a, a better striker or a new striker at least. As well as probably even a better centre-back than Ahmed Hodzic and Euro, because 84-83, even Euro 83-22, he still has a lot of room to grow, but he's a bit disappointing so far. For the striker spot, I have decided to go in for an Irish man. It is Evan Ferguson joining us from Celta Figo of all teams, from the Spanish side for 92 million on the dot. Our second signing, a centre-back, just to give us depth and strength. He should be a very, very high-rated centre-back as well. Cristian Romero joining us from Spurs for 55 million, that's a bargain. We sold Oscar Parsons to Leicester City for 45 million. Also, just to get in some funds for Artar Elliott, he goes to Hoffenheim, showing great potential, but we couldn't turn down that money. There are only four hours left in the transfer window, but we have 112 million for one last player. And it's very clear that we need one more midfielder, either defensive or offensive, because otherwise we have no reserves left once again. After what felt like hours searching for that perfect player in the CM slash CDM spot, we finally found our man. 87 overall. And here he gets greeted. Red carpet out once again. Vitinha joining us from Atletico Madrid for 92 million on the dot. I've actually decided to switch up the formation. Cassier now the captain. CDM 89 overall. Rida and Vitinha in midfield. CM Vitinha and Cam Rida. Also, that means that Fratesi, of course, 28-86 is on the bench. As well as Sousa, 29-87, still a very good man from the bench, of course. He will chop and change with the three players there in midfield. And actually, this time, we are in a Champions League group that we quite simply have to get out of. Group E, we're alongside Athletic Bilbao, Feyenoord from, of course, once again, the Netherlands. And then Lausanne. On the 1st of January, we are in third place. Behind Spurs and Manchester City. Six points behind Spurs, so once again we are in the Champions League places, but we can't seem to push for that Premier League title. And in the Champions League, we didn't top the group. Actually, it was Athletic Bilbao on 11 points, two points ahead of us. But of course, finishing second means we will face PSG. This season is Fatavu's season, up to a 91, 14 goals already, seven assists. But where is Binoy Gittens? Why hasn't he scored more than three goals? I don't understand that. We now have both Kane and Ferguson on a 86 rating, but of course Kane is 11 years older. 
We need both of them to step up their game in the second part of the season. The midfield is brilliant. The striking force is great as well. We have a fantastic backline and a good goalkeeper still in ramp. Oh boys, I'm dreading this here. It is the home game first against PSG at Bremel Lane. With a full strength starting 11, Kane still has the starting spot. We quick sim the game here. Can we get something? Yes! Oh my god, we win the game! Fatavu! 1-0 victory at home against PSG. That's what I wanted to see. I was dreading a 5-1 defeat, but actually we got the 1-0 win. Okay, boys. Let's take a deep breath and go into the game at the Parc des Princes in Paris. Can we get it here? Done! Oh my god! 4-3 on penalties we win. What was that game? Mbappé and Kamavinga of all people scored for PSG. Kane gave us one back. Which meant that the game uh, went to extra time. All the way to penalties. Th Dembele and Hakimi missed for PSG. Kane and Fatavu missed for us. Adli then missed for them and Kadioglu with the winning pen. But we have won that game here on penalties in the most dramatic of circumstances. In the quarterfinals we will face... Liverpool first at Anfield and I have put Ferguson up top ahead of Kane because he's outgrown him. So let's jump into that first leg here at Anfield with the hopes of course to get a result somehow. But we lose 2-1. I mean that's not looking good bruv. Second leg here we go against Liverpool 2-1 down. Kane is now in the starting spot. So let's jump into the quick sim. With our fingers crossed. And we win 3-0. Oh my god, how did that happen? <laughs> Kane scores a brace. It was the best decision of my life to put him there. Vinny Souza even scores. It went to extra time. And we crush Liverpool in the quarterfinals to progress to the semis. Very interesting semi-finals though as Olympique Marseille, Napoli and Inter are in there. And Dortmund and Chelsea have been eliminated as well as Liverpool of course. The semi-final is upon us. And we will play Napoli first away from home. So let's jump into that game here, away at the Olympic Stadium, with our full strength starting 11, Ferguson up top. And we actually do win the game, 2-1. Chalanolu gave them one back, but Kane and Rida score for Sheffield United. And we are one step away from the final, of course. Like last year, we also won the first game last year against Dortmund, and then crumbled in the second leg. So that cannot happen this year. Final step ahead of us. The Champions League semi-final second leg. We have an advantage, just like last year. Please do, do not bottle it, lads, here. In the second leg against Napoli, we draw the game to all. And that is enough, which means that Sheffield United are going to the Champions League final. Ferguson and Fatavu scored for us. Kvara scored a brace for them. But Napoli are out and Sheffield United, the Blades, are into the Champions League final. And in that final, we will face Inter Milan, who have crushed Olympic Marseille. From there, all of that glory in the Champions League came to a cost. We only finished fifth in the Premier League. I mean, abysmal second part of the season. How did that happen? I will never know. 54 goals conceded is just too much. A surprising final is in Watford loses to Liverpool, though, in the FA Cup final. The FA Cup just hasn't been our friend. We've lost in the round three. Replay against Swansea City of all teams on penalties. We can't defend our Carabao Cup title either as Liverpool have won that over Arsenal. We've actually been knocked out by Liverpool in the semi-finals. 4-0 we've lost the second leg after being 2-0 up. The Europa League has gone to Leverkusen over Man United. And the Conference League goes to Lazio to Italy over AZ Alkma. Fatavo has done really really well. 19 goals, 13 assists. Harry Kane has stepped up his game as well. 17 goals for him. Great second part of the season. Ferguson with 7 has disappointed me, I'm not gonna lie. And 12 goals and 10 assists for Kessier, who is up to a 90 overall. What a player this is. For now, let's focus on the Champions League final between Sheffield United and Inter Milan.
Here we go then, it's Sheffield United against Inter at the Benfica Stadium. Pinoy Gittens, ball inside, gets cleared, but now Rida with a lot of space! Great shot, great save, Ederson is in goal to Inter. Corner kick, it's Fatavu from the right, with his left, gives it inside, it's cleared though. Still us on the ball, it's Quaresma, we start on the front foot here. Into Rida, Rida sees Romero. Good piece of play, it's Ferguson! 1-0 Champions United, we are up after 8 minutes only. Evan Ferguson, the Irishman, gives us the lead. I mean, what a piece of play here. Romero into Rida, Rida with a great ball. And then Ferguson with a fantastic, emphatic finish. Inter tried to react immediately through that setback, it's Jokeres. They play with two strikers up top, Jokeres and Osimen. Incredible front line, but now Osimen. We do well against Vitor Osimen. We have the ball again. It's Vitinha into Kessi, our captain into Rida. Fabian Rida gets blocked here, but still Rida. But now both Bastoni is there, but under pressure, a lot of pressure. We apply here. Kirkshu now into Jokeres. Careful, Jokeres. Still Jokeres. And still on the ball here, Bjorkeres, 1-0, how did that go through your Ramsdale? I'm sorry, how, that, how did that even go through here? I mean, the defenders only stand off, but yeah, it goes through the legs, I believe, of Ramsdale. That is horrendous, horrendous. Jamie Bino Gittens, Jamie, trying to set, Evan Ferguson up, great save, Addison. We are still on the front foot, it's Fatavu with the corner. He stands off there and it's a goal! Once again Evan Ferguson, great idea to start him here in that final. And I mean, nobody was close to him here. What a questionable celebration though. Corner kick in by Fatavu and then an emphatic header, but how is he so, so alone? Nobody even close to him. And now Inter can go again, it's Gjökeres. As soon as he gets on the ball, I'm... Really terrified. Now Ossiman. Still Ossiman. Vitor Ossiman. Great save this time, Ramsdale. Corner kick in there. It's De Jong. De Jong with the corner inside. Fatavu gets it away, but not entirely. Still Inter on the charge. It's Di Marco. Still Di Marco. But we get a foot in. Very important. And now we could maybe catch them on the counter. But therefore we need runners here. It's Evan Ferguson. Still waiting for the runners. Plays it outside. For Fatavu, he's very, very fast. Fatavu gets past John Stones. Fatavu, Vitinha. Ah, gets a blocked shot. Still the Udogi, cross inside. And then Frank Cassie, 3-1. Second minute of extra time in the first half. We are 3-1 up to a power shot of dreams here by Frank Cassie. What a shot. Then you see the curl on that. Lads, that curl was insane. Look at it. I mean, no chance for Ederson. Cassier into Ferguson. Maybe now open space here. It's Pino Egitens. That's no offside. No offside. It's Pino Egitens. Oh my God. How don't you score there, lads? What a chance. Inter on the charge. It's uh, Frankie de Jong. Now Ossiman. But we get it away once again against Ossiman. We've been so good. Now it's Kökshu. Don't let them score one, because otherwise it's going to get complicated. It's Kökshu, and they score one immediately when I say that. Ahmed Odzic, Souza, Fratesi and Kane come in for the last 15 minutes, hopefully, so that Ahmed Odzic can lift the Champions League. Evan Ferguson has done a splendid job, but now there comes Harry Kane to try and seal the result. We just have to be very, very calm now. Very calm. We can waste time, no problem. Fratesi, maybe even try to score one more. It's Kessi into Kane. Here is Harry Kane. Not the fastest anymore, but still a very good shooter of the ball. Ederson with a brilliant save. Fatavu again with a corner kick. Fatavu, great corner. Good header, it's a fourth goal. It is Vinny Souza who just came on. The OG Sheffield United player. That's how you like to see the final goal, 4-2 to Sheffield United. We run riot with Inter. 
great corner by Fatabu. And then a fantastic header, second header of the game already that ended in a goal. I do believe that now this game is beyond Inter Milan. But you never, you just never know with this game. I mean, Vini Souza with a splendid intervention now sends Fatavu away. He could inflict further damage on Inter Milan. It's Fatavu seeing Fratesi. Fratesi, he's still fresh. Bino Egitens. We do a bit too much. Still Bino Egitens, but they get it away. Now Di Marco, though. Careful. Still Di Marco. Oh my god, that ball goes through and Zer Emery scores. It's a goal fast here in the final. But I think that's too late. It was so important to score that last goal because that enabled us to win the Champions League here. 4-3 in an absolute classic. It's been a long time since so many goals were scored in the final that I played. But 4-3, a brace by Ferguson. A goal by Kessie and one by Sousa, the OG Sheffield United player. Lads, I hope you enjoyed this video, this challenge with Sheffield United. Something a bit different. Please consider dropping a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and also tell me in the comments what else you'd like to see next. For now, I'm going to leave you alone with the celebrations as our captain, the OG captain of Sheffield United, Ahmet Odzic, We lift the Champions League trophy for Sheffield United. We have done it within six seasons, and Ahmet Odzic lifts the Champions League. Have a wonderful rest of your day. It's been Rebid Sombrero.